Let me now give the floor to the Alliance of uh, the Socialists and Democrats group, uh, Mr. Pitella. Thank you very much, President. Well, let's tell the truth. Some people thought that Trump would basically be a joke. Instead of that, he's revealing himself to be a nightmare. Let's not underestimate what's going on here. Historically, when we've underestimated things and people, then we've ended up with dictators, people who have caused war and shed blood. Mrs. Mogherini said very correctly that our friendship with the people of America is not up for discussion. It's essential, it's fruitful, and it remains a firm point in our feelings and our actions. We continue to strongly admire the United States, what they've been historically and what they are today. But it's precisely because of that that it's so painful to note these proposals, these measures that are being taken by Trump. These are an attack on the European uh, legal civilization. Let's say things as they are, Manfred. This travel ban aimed at the citizens of just a few Muslim countries has nothing to do with border management and fighting terrorism. This is a populist lie. Some people are being banned, others aren't. It basically depends on who Trump does business with. Let's say things as they are, because our citizens need clear words on this. This is an attack on the right to asylum and an attack on the rule of law. This is an attack, together with other things, the wall on the border with Mexico. I mean, this is an, an international country that's going to damage its relations with Mexico, with Latin America. The whole world's being affected by this virus that's being sown. Airlines don't refuse to take people from these countries on your planes. Don't stop them traveling. Joe Linen's right here, as is Manfred Weber, when they say, well, if this ambassador were appointed, well, then he wouldn't be welcome, because I can't welcome someone who, even before they're appointed, says, I'm going there to destroy the European Union. Let me say to Mrs. May, to the UK government, Do not play the Trojan horse to destroy the European Union. Don't take on that role. It would be good for member states to call their ambas ambassadors for consultations with regard to what's going on in the United States. That would be a symbolic act and it would also be a good thing. It would be a good thing also not to see Trump invited to Europe until this issue is resolved. Let me conclude by saying, like Mrs. Mogherini, I'm in favour of cooperation. But until Trump changes his line, the door of, doors of Europe need to be closed in his face. Thank you. Per il gruppo dei conservatori... For the Conservatives and Reformist group now, Mr. Kamal, you have the floor. Thank you. According to a study by the Cato Institute, a well-respected U.S. think tank, and a classical liberal think tank, since 1975, no American has been killed on U.S. soil by a national from any of the seven countries listed in President Trump's executive order. So those of us who believe that law should be fair, that there should be equality under the law, that the primary functions of law should be enforcement of contracts and social order, will rightly be concerned by this arbitrary ban, which affects not only Muslims, but also affects Christians fleeing persecution and war. The Aldi group, please. Has ended his intervention, and uh, also work uh, Mr. Kamal started. But I don't understand something, uh, not of your intervention, Mr. Kamal. You're first of all uh, saying, yeah, that is not done. And then you are saying, two phrases later, but we have to accept it because he is elected. 
No, it is not because he is elected that he can go against human values and the values of the United States of America. Even an elected president with a majority, and he has no majority of the popular vote in the U.S., has to listen to the American Constitution, has to listen to the American judiciary. And that is my start of my intervention. In fact, uh, people are saying, or some people are saying in the U.S., yeah, it helps security. Well, it's nonsense. You have given the, uh, the, the figures. Since 1975, all terrorists in the U.S. came from three countries. Egypt, Saudi Arabia, and Lebanon. None of them is on the list. It are seven countries, and nobody came from that country since 1975 as a terrorist. So it's pure discrimination. And pure discrimination in a, a more broader approach, but because it's not only about this religious ban. It's about yeah, fueling populism and nationalism for the moment, what the Trump administration is doing. And that's not only by appointing Mr. Farage as his spokesman here in the plenary, but it's also by having the ID to designate uh, uh, Malloch as the ambassador. And more important, let's be aware of that, Steve Bannon, member now of the National Security Council of the United States of America, a man who is openly saying we want a worldwide right-wing movement to get rid of the European Union, to get done with the European Union, and there they are sitting here. It's our fifth column, the fifth column, because Mr. Farage is working with Mr. Bannon. He sees him on a regular basis to, in fact, one thing, that's to see how the European Union can be destroyed in the coming years. Not, not thinking, not thinking, dear colleagues, on one thing, it's a big risk to bid on nationalism and populism in Europe. We got that already in the past. We got already in the 20th century people who thought that nationalism and populism was the solution for our continent. And they have created the group of atrocities we have ever seen. 20 million deaths, Mr. Farage, have nationalism caused in Europe. And there is no family in the European Union who have not a grandfather or a grandmother or a son of a, of, of a daughter who was not victim of that nationalism and of that populism. And that's the reason why we have created the European Union, to overcome that, to make a continent of peace. And I think what I see for the moment, that is an American president, normally what does it do an American president? Take Roosevelt, for example. He wanted to be the leader of the free world. I'm now seeing an American president who wants to be the leader of the fight against the free world against solidarity and against tolerance. And I think we have, it is an existential moment, Mr. President, for, for the European Union. We can only take one decision. We have the autocrat Putin who want to divide Europe. We have uh, President Trump who have a populist, nationalist view and want to disintegrate us. We have the threat of the radical Islamist uh, in the South and we have our bunch of people here who want to destroy inside the European Union. We can do one thing. That is, unite us, fight back as the European Union, and I hope in La Valletta it will not only be the letter, and I support the letter of President Tusk uh, on this behalf, that will be the conclusion. I hope for once that all European leaders have the courage to stand up together with the European Parliament and fight back this bunch of nationalists and populists who want to destroy us. Thank you, Mrs. Zimmer. Now, for the GUI group, please. Yeah, vielen, vielen Dank. Thank you very much. I'm sure this is not the first time, nor will it be the last time, that we discuss the policies of the United States and more particularly of Mr. Trump. Thank you, Ms. Mogherini, for having established a link to the time when uh, Mr. Trump signed his decree to stop the travel of uh, Muslim citizens. It was the 27th of January, and it wasn't a matter of chance. It was quite deliberate, because on the same day, he 
insist he insulted a person who talked about his uh, ancestors dying in the concentration camps and uh, he said he knew what it was like when people were being persecuted for their beliefs and Trump said he was a he was a bad actor this is the kind of level of force out of Europe there's some in Germany which worries me thank you mrs keller now for the greens group thank you the 45th president of the United States of America is truly opening a new chapter in the history of the US and in the history of democracy as well. And let's be very clear, this ban on seven countries is not you know, something that's put forward for security or one or the other reasons. It's a very clearly discriminatory act. It's targeting Muslims, even though not only Muslims are hit, and uh, even if it doesn't hit all Muslims, it is directed against people because of their religion. And who could have imagined that such a thing can happen? Who could have thought that the freedoms and the rights that we all assume are normal, natural, we've always had them, we think they're guaranteed that they can evaporate so quickly, that they can disappear so suddenly. This is apparently how liberal democracy dies. It vanishes very quickly with an executive order. The US built itself on religious freedom. That was one of the key figures about its founding and on immigration. And now what is left of this American dream? And how quickly did it vanish? But that's also the thing, isn't it? All the rights, all the freedoms, the liberties that we take for granted, actually they're not for granted. They always have to be fought for. They have to be fought for every single day. Democracy isn't something that you know you set up, you write it into your constitution and then voila, it's there. No, you have to defend it every single day. Same for human rights. They're never guaranteed. You have to work for them. And here in Europe, we pride ourselves of living in a union of peace, democracy, and rule of law. We're proud to defend the idea of human rights in the world as well. But do we really do enough to safeguard those values? Don't we also restrict access at our borders? Don't we also have walls and fences? Do we not also, in, even in this chamber, sometimes hear people who discriminate against other people based on where they come from, based on their religion? And what are we doing about that? Every one of us, including the governments of the member states, need to be clear on which side do we stand. Do we stand on the side of hate and of walls, or do we stand on the side of democracy and of building bridges? I think we need to build our European Union stronger and for that we need to get our act together when it comes to finally solving the economic crisis that is still leading to so much unemployment, especially of young people. We need to coordinate our foreign policy and we need to be champions of the international law because there's not many other people out there in the world who will do it. We need to step up our role in the UN and also when it comes to climate change. Let us make Europe the counter model to Trump the light of liberty, of human rights, of rule of law, and also of generosity. Let us be the ones that show justice and compassion. And let us, sure we don't, let us make sure we're not just speaking of those values, but we're actually demonstrating them in everything we do. The Statue of Liberty was once given by France to the younger sister, America, Sisters in Freedom and Rights. I think we should build more freedom liberty, uh, statues of liberty we need to put them in Lesbos, in Lampedusa, where people arrive full of hope and fear. We need to put them everywhere where people are standing up for their rights and also for their neighbor rights. Let us be the Europe that brings forward, that champions those people who fight for the rights and the rights of others, no matter the nationality, their religion, their sex, their sexual orientation, no matter where they come from. Europe needs to be building bridges and not walls. Let us do that together. Thank you. Grazie. Thank you very much. Mr. Farage now, on behalf of the FDD group. Thank you. Well, I can see that you're all very upset here this afternoon, and I've no doubt that the events in the USA over the last few weeks have been a very profound shock to you. Perhaps you're right. You see, what has happened here is somebody has stood on a manifesto for election, got into office, 
and within one week said that he will hold faith with his own electorate. It is called genuine democracy. Unlike the system we have in the European Union, where the unelected commissioners, like Morgherini here, have the sole right to propose legislation. So I'm sure that it's a great shock to you to see that a genuinely elected Democrat is doing what he was put in to do. Um, and it must be, it must be, um, I would think today in Washington. Sorry. I can't hear you, mate. Di questo Parlamento e delle funzioni istituzionali. This Parliament has uh, institutional functions, as does, does the Commission, out of institutional respect to the Commission, but also as a result of, of the Commission as President. Uh, we need to be polite, please. So, uh, thank you. And out of institutional respect, President, to the truth, perhaps you will understand and agree with me that within the European form of lawmaking, it is the unelected Commission that have the sole right to propose legislation. If I'm wrong in saying that, you can throw me out of this parliament right here, right now, this afternoon. Mr Farage, I am just asking you to be a little bit more respectful, please. Thank you. You, can, you may continue. Oh, I'll be respectful, all right. And perhaps you will be too, for the right of the leader of a political party that won the European elections in the United Kingdom in 2014. Now, it seems to me that actually, with all the anti-Trump rhetoric that is coming from everywhere, actually what we're hearing is the true nature of the European project, which is genuine anti-Americanism. Trump is motivated by protecting the United States of America from Islamic terrorism, whereas what has happened in this room and in governments around Europe is you have welcomed these people into your own homes. But can we please, just for a moment, look at the facts? Amongst all the hyperbole and the hysteria, all that Donald Trump has done is taken seven countries that were identified by President Obama as posing a risk to the USA. Obama already had put in place extreme vetting. What Trump has done is for 90 days to say, let's examine that vetting and see whether it's good enough. But I want to ask you, Mr. Verhofstadt, and all the others, with your faux outrage today, where were you when Obama in 2011 banned any Iraqi from going into the country for six months? Why do I hear no criticism in this chamber or from the Commission of Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Bahrain and others who refuse to take a single, not one, refugee or displaced person from Syria. And how can it be, how can it be that on Holocaust Day, last Friday, not a single one of you criticised the 16 countries in the world that ban Israeli Jews from even going to their country on holiday? What is this hypocrisy? So perhaps what we need to do, Mr. President, and through you to the members, perhaps what we need to do is to be a little bit more constructive. All of us here say we're Democrats. Well, here's a chance to prove it. Let us invite President Trump to come here to this European Parliament. I'm sure as Democrats you'd all agree that what we need to do is to have an open dialogue with the newly elected most powerful man in the world and if you throw that rejection back in my face then you prove yourself to be the anti-democratic zealots that I always thought you were. Could we have a microphone for the speaker please? Thank you Mr Farfstadt. Mr. De Graaf, now for the ENF group, please. President, Mr. Sorry. Mr. Tusk recently said that the United States of America is as great a threat to the EU as Russia and Islamic State. Is Mr. Tusk suffering from irrational anxiety, from panic attacks that is disturb his view on reality? 
President Trump has rightfully introduced a temporary stop on the entry of citizens from countries that were already identified by his predecessor, Mr. Obama, and uh, Mr. Farage said that already, as countries that pose a threat to U.S. security. His argument to improve border controls before allowing people to enter is completely valid. In the EU, we are directly suffering from the consequences of a failing border control. We, are, we have suffered attacks in Brussels, Nice, Paris and Berlin, and many lost their lives of have, of were uh, severely injured. Trump called the EU a mess, and he's right. It is a mess. And the outcry against President Trump is pure hypocrisy. Mr. Farage already said that. Where was the pro protest against the exclusion of Israeli citizens by the same Islamic countries that are now banned from the United States? You should be ashamed of jeopardizing the lives of EU citizens because of the failing border controls in the EU. And I call upon Mr. Tusk and upon the Commission to follow the example of President Trump. Install national border control. Keep jihadists out. Not just from the seven countries that President Trump singled out, but of many more that are responsible for the wave of illegal migrants in the EU. Thank you. Thank you. During Nigel Farage's speech, a member of the British Labour Party sat behind me with a sign all the way through and not till the end did someone come down to deal with that. I trust that something will be done to discipline this member because if not, I'll write my own sign and go and sit over there. It might say something like sell out. Honourable Etheridge. Mr Etheridge, please. Mr Etheridge, we sent the staff to tell the member that uh, he was not entitled to hold up that sign. Now, Mr Papadakis from the non-attached members, one and a half minutes. Thank you. We can see the, the trends of, of capital here. These travel restrictions are a dangerous development. Thousands of migrants and refugees are the victims of the capitalist system, which is uh, being managed by uh, Trump. Now, this